Hello, my front porch friend. Well, it's hard to believe it with these blue skies behind me right now, but it has been raining in the valley today, which has required me to stay close to the house. But that's okay, because I found some beautiful things I want to show you and a word to share with you. I want you just to look at these gorgeous roses. It just seems to have exploded over the last few days. Roses just happen to be one of my most favorite flowers. Roses and hydrangeas and buttercups, of course. I wish I could just pick a whole bouquet of these today and just hand them to you. But for right now, we'll just enjoy the view. I have a word I wanna share with you, but before I get into that word, I wanna thank you for your comments. I love to read your comments. My heart is so moved whenever I read about the needs that you have in your life for provision or for healing, read about the things that you're believing for. Maybe I read about your hurt and betrayal or the pain you're experiencing believing for a prodigal. But let me tell you something, my heart is also stirred with hope when I think about the change that's going to take place in you and in your family and your situation when you pray. That's why I feel a mandate from God to come to you every week to encourage your faith. And I take that seriously. I love being your prayer partner because I have seen firsthand the power of prayer. We talked about last week, just some of the many ways there are to pray, and there are many. But you know, it kind of all boils down to just the simplicity of prayer. And even today, as I was walking through these, this little tiny rose garden of mine, it reminded me of the, the best portrayal I know of prayer in that old hymn. Do you remember it? It's that old hymn that it just says, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known that's what prayer is it's just walking and talking with god and it's in that place of prayer that perfect love cast out fear the place of prayer we find absolute contentment and satisfaction it's where we find comfort when we're hurting, or we find peace in a storm. It's also the place that we learn to hear his voice, and then we take the words that we hear from him, and we decree those words over every situation in our life, and that's when we see miracles happen. But there's sometimes in prayer, we find it hard to break through. This is what I felt like the Lord told me to share with you today. There's sometimes whenever we're just trying to pray and it shouldn't just feel like such an effort. It's the greatest joy of our lives. But there's times like it's like there's no flow in prayer. and You're thinking, what is wrong? And you should ask those questions because we are those as intercessors. We are those people that are the like the conduits to bring God's will from heaven to earth. But sometimes it's as though everything is just stopped up. In fact, it kind of reminds me, come to think of it, of a, a few days ago, I had a, a sink in my house, my kitchen, my bathroom sink that was all stopped up. And every time you turn the water on, it would just all back up on the top side of my sink. So I went to Walmart and you know what you do. I bought some of those, uh, some of that extra strength Drano, poured it in the drain there, let it sort of saturate and soak for some time. And then after a little while, after some time goes by, I turn that water on and I mean, shh, 
there it was, flushed out and wonderful. That's kind of what happens, isn't it, through prayer. When we sense things are stopped up and we're praying and we're praying, it's as though the answers to prayer are kind of getting all stopped up on heaven's side. And there's something wrong here and we're not getting it, the prayers to the earth. And it's that time we need to say, Holy Spirit, come and just be like that Drano. Pour into my heart and into my spirit and just saturate whatever this is. Reveal to me whatever this hindrance is. Because God, I've got to have breakthrough. I've got to have breakthrough. I've got to have answers from heaven to the earth. And all of a sudden, he'll begin to reveal some things to us. And by his spirit, he will flush that stuff out of our spirit. And heaven's flow again will turn on and we'll receive the breakthrough. I'll tell you the truth. What he spoke to my heart today to share with you is this. Unforgiveness is one of the greatest hindrances to prayer that I know. You know, unforgiveness is so important that when Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, he even included in that short prayer this statement. He said, pray this, Lord, forgive me my sins as I forgive those who've sinned against me. I always took that line serious because, whoa, there's a lot of weightiness when I think about God. I want you to forgive me the way I'm forgiving other people. In other words, God, I don't need you to forgive me partial. I don't need you to forgive me just a little bit. God, I, I, don't, I don't need you to forgive me and then just constantly think about what I've done against you. Oh, no. God, I need you to forgive me completely. So, Lord, forgive me my sins as I forgive other people that sin against me. So I want to forgive other people the way I want God to forgive me. You know, Peter was so blown away by the teachings of Jesus on forgiveness that In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, one day Peter just blurts out, Lord, are you serious? I mean, are you expecting me to forgive him like seven times in a day? Jesus answers Peter, no, Peter, not seven times, 70 times seven in a day. In other words, no, Peter, not seven times, 490 times a day. (laughs) What in the world? What is, what is Jesus saying? In other words, just no limit. You know why he probably said that? It's because you and me, we probably need forgiveness about 490 times a day with God, don't we? Jesus was telling Peter, Lord, Peter, there's, there's no limit. You just forgive. You know, I know sometimes it's easy to forgive whenever it's just small things in our lives. It's easy to forgive sort of the grocery clerk that hurts your feelings and you get over it before you get to the car. Or maybe it's easy to forgive the the person in your office that just works with you every day. But when the pain has come from an unfaithful husband, when the pain has come from the painful, bitter, sharp, heartless words of a child. When the pain has come from the betrayal of a best friend, that is a kind of hurt that only Jesus can heal. My dear friend, can I just look at you today and tell you from experience, he can heal that kind of hurt too. Many years ago now, I began to learn some lessons on forgiveness that I feel led I'm supposed to share with you again today. I remember this night, even though it was in 1987. I remember it like it was last night. That unforgettable night of when you find out about the deepest level and kind of betrayal that there is. And really, In that one night, my world turned upside down. I had experienced that night, it was like a tsunami of emotions I had never felt in my life. 
I had never known anger like that. I'll be honest with you, I had never known hate. But that night, in one conversation, I was flooded with emotions I didn't know what to do with. The pain of it all just shut me down for several days. Several days to the point that I couldn't pray. And I had never in my life been at a place where I could not pray, ever. I remember I spent a few days where I just walked around in this horrible state. I remember I could, the only thing I could do in prayer was I would lay in bed at night, sleepless nights, and the only thing I could do was I could say his name. I would just go, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, and I could sense him there, but he wasn't saying anything. A few days later, after my, the knowledge of these things that had happened in my, my marriage, my life, I remember I was getting out of my car one day, and again, I had still not heard anything from God. And as I was getting out of the car, I opened my car door and I looked down and happened to see my Bible was lying there in the floorboard, the passenger seat. So I re reached down and I picked up my Bible and I heard the Holy Spirit say, open it up. I, l I laid, let the Bible just fall open. And I don't do this often, but that day I just needed a word so bad that I just I just let it fall open and I looked down at the first verse that my eyes would fall on. And this is what I saw. It was in Matthew, the sixth chapter and the 14th verse, I believe. And it said this, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you yours. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive yours. And I remember thinking to myself, God, is that the first thing you have to say to me after finding all of this out? The first, I mean, I was wanting a verse that day out of Psalms, like breaking out the teeth of the ungodly. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I wanted one of those mean Bible verses. But that's the first thing he said to me. Well, I took those words and I laid them deep in my spirit. And over the next few days, I began to pray. And you know, even though I was full of pain and hurt and unforgiveness and anger and everything else imaginable, I just tried to pray the best I could, pouring out my heart, crying as hard as I could cry. And I just said, God, I remember saying to specifically, oh, honey, I remember this like it was last night. I remember being in that living room and just laying there on that floor saying, God, I want to forgive. Lord, I hear you telling me to forgive these people, but I don't even know how. I don't know how to deal with this pain. I don't know how to deal with this unforgiveness. And I heard him speak to me. And he said this, I want you to take a chair. And I want you to sit that chair in the middle of your living room. And as you take this chair in your living room, he said, I want you to take each one of these people and one at a time, I know they're not here in person, but one at a time, I want you to sit them down in the chair. And Karen, I want you to kneel before the chair and I want you to call their name out loud. And I want you to forgive each one of them. My friend, I went to my kitchen and I took the chair. And just like this one right here. I remember it. I laid, sat down like this and I knelt before the chair. And I remember that day sitting at that chair and calling each name out loud. And I remember sitting there at that chair and as I called their names, I remember I would call her name and I would, I would say, it's speak her name and then I would say, I forgive you. I choose in my heart to forgive you. 
I will in my heart to forgive you. I remember, I remember saying to them, you are free to go. You are free to leave my hurt and my pain. You are free to go. I will not hold this. And I remember at one point as I was praying this stuff, I remember looking up to God and in all honesty to God, I remember saying to God, God, I don't feel this. I remember saying to God, God, I don't feel this. I feel angry. I remember telling him, God, I even hate. But because you tell me to do it, as an act of my will, I choose to forgive them. And I sat at those chair, that chair, and with each one of them, I would call their name and tell them, you are free to leave the prison of my anger. You are free to leave the prison of my pain. I drop the charges against you. I choose to release you. And I remember the last one, he said, set him down too. And I set him down in the spirit. And then with all of my heart, I told him, I choose as an act of my will to forgive you. You can leave the prison of my pain. But I noticed something was happening. What I never even really understood until it was almost complete. I found out something. I was telling them to leave the prison of my heart. But what was happening was I was setting them free. But God was setting me free because what I was doing for them, God was doing for me. Oh, my friend, I believe today this is your word and it's a key to your breakthrough. I believe that right now there may be a chair you need to get out in your life. And even by faith, as I did by faith, sit some people down in that chair and release them. It's time for them to leave the prison of your unforgiveness. I received such a healing that began in my life that day. It was a journey. It was a process of healing. It didn't just come all at once because sometimes even after you forgive, you think about it the next day and you feel like it's all back again. But what do you do then, Karen? You just go back to God and say, God, I empty it out again. I empty, and what happens is, what you'll find is, the more you empty it out, the less it begins to fill up. And suddenly, the roller coaster dips that you are experiencing begin to level off. And all of a sudden, one day, you'll look back and you'll realize, I feel no hate toward her anymore. I feel no resentment toward him anymore. It doesn't mean they got to be your best friend. It just means that you know they don't live in a prison of resentment any longer. One more thing I want to tell you. It was not long after that prayer with the chair. I found myself one time on the living room of my bedroom floor during that same season. It was after the, the prayer of forgiveness time. And I was just laying there on that carpet. You ever been in those places I call clawing the carpet? And I remember praying to God again, emptying my cup of, of, of emotion. And I remember saying to God that day, God, I can't take vengeance on these people. You've told me in your word that vengeance is yours. So God, I'm not, I can't take vengeance on these people. So God, I'm just going to give them to you. I give the people to you, but I can quote what I said next. I said, but God, I'm asking you one thing. God, give me vengeance on the devil that did this to me. I said, and God, here's the way I want it. I said, God, I want you to give me a song, a song of healing and deliverance. And God, I want you to let me sing that song to more people than I've ever dreamed possible. And God, here's the next way I want my vengeance on the enemy. I want you to send me people that are hurting Send me men and send me women that are hurting like I'm hurting right now. And let me take the healing that you are pouring into me and let me pour it into them. And in doing so, God, let me make Satan regret the day he ever touched my heart. Oh, my friend, can I just tell you, God answered my prayer. It was just a few days after I prayed that. In the same month, 
I prayed it. I received a little cassette tape in the mail that had a song on it that I knew was the song he had given me. And a few days later, I sang it on TBN to cover the whole world. A song that says, you may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. That was the song God gave me. And he answered my second request by letting you be in my life. Because I can come to you today that are hurting like I was that day and tell you, I know a God that heals the brokenhearted. I know a God who sets the captive free. I know a God that fully restores everything that's been taken from you. I know a God who answers prayer. Lord, I pray for my friend today. I pray that she is strengthened in faith to keep believing. I pray for every broken place in her heart to be healed tonight, Lord. That you will heal the places of the deepest betrayal and hurt, no matter where it's come from. You said in your word you're near to those whose hearts are broken. Manifest your presence to my friend, Lord. Pour your healing presence in her heart and in his heart. I pray today, God, that you will restore and recover everything the enemy has taken from them. And God, I'm asking you to give them strength to forgive the way you have forgiven us. For the example you taught us when you hung on the cross, Lord, forgive them. I thank you that today forgiveness is ours to receive and to give in Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, he is with you where you are right now. You may need to take a chair and take care of some business tonight. And when it's all done, you may need to make a phone call or write a letter and just let that person know everything's going to be all right. I'm moving on with my life. You're forgiven. I hold nothing against you. I believe you're going to experience a breakthrough in prayer like you've never experienced in your life. I love you, my friend. Please comment below and let me see what God is doing in your heart. And let me agree with you for the needs that you're believing for. I look forward to talking.